Hi everybody, Amanda here. Um, a brief history on myself. Um, from sixth grade through my sophomore year of college, I have been a musician. I played the trombone, I did um, concert band, uh, marching band in high school, I did the jazz band, the pet band, and in doing so, um, although I have greatly enjoyed myself, I have not had any visual arts since the fifth grade. Um, now that I'm an art education major, my general art knowledge is quite lacking. I have a lot to learn. So this week in my elementary art education class, we learned how to do something called a crayon resist, and I greatly enjoyed myself in doing so. I felt like a kid again playing with crayons. Um, and I wanted to share the process that I learned in that class. So these are the steps that I learned for doing that. I hope you enjoy. Okay, so step one for making a crayon resist is to get your paper and your basic wax-based uh, crayons. Make sure they are wax-based and not fabric crayons or soybean crayons or any weird thing like that because in order for it to be a crayon resist, the wax has to be present so that the um, temper paint will not stick to it. So basic generic crayons and paper. Okay, once you get your crayons and your paper, you need to follow a few rules as you go along drawing. The first thing is you need to color really heavily when you're going at it with your crayons. Um, you want to have a thick layer of wax down, that way the temper paint cannot get underneath the crayon to the paper. You want to make sure that it slides right off and resists to it. So thick wax layer. Okay, rule number two is that you need to make sure you use small shapes. Nothing any larger than the palm of a child's hand. And you also need to make sure that in between every shape you have a gap. That way the tipper paint can move off of the color crayon areas into the paper. So you need to have spaces in between every shape. Rule number three is that you need to use light, bright colors. Darker colors are hard to see after the black tipper paint has been painted across. Black beside black. Obviously, your shapes can disappear. Dark blue does similar things, and then purple along the same line. So try to use colors like orange, yellow, red, um, light blues. White? Great. Try anything besides the dark ones. Okay, the next step involves the black temper paint. Um, the first step is to make sure that your black temper paint is watered down. Um, the reason for this is because you want it to be able to flow across the crayon on the paper. Um, once you have the right consistency, you'll take one stroke at a time from left to right or right to left, whichever you choose, but one stroke at a time across the paper. You don't want to do repetitive strokes on the same area because the more paint that's on an area, the easier it is for it to seep under your crayon and that just ruins it. So one stroke don't repeat. If you happen to leave any white spaces, go over it, but only minimally because you really want to try to do a clean job of one stroke at a time again. Once that's done, you can put it on a drying rack and allow it to dry, and then you have a piece de resistance. So I hope you've enjoyed learning about crayon resist, and if you have any tips, tricks, or questions, feel free to comment because this is a learning process not only for me, but for anyone out there who happens to be watching. So thanks for doing just that and watching. <laughs> and hopefully I'll see you next time. So just to sign that out there, this has been my most interesting uh, recording process. I had don't know how many times I've messed up and had to re-record things, so. This is a lot harder than most people think. Just letting y'all know. Everyone should try it at least once. The wax.
Black Heart.